Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so let us now see how small intestine help us in the process of digestion. Now we will talk only about the mucosal layer of epithelium that is the innermost layer. Now there are two types of cell in the innermost layer of epithelium which contribute in the process of digestion. So one is the goblet cells which are specialized to secrete mucus. So they are, these are the specialized cells which are present in the innermost layer of epithelium and they secrete mucus. And we all know what mucus does. Mucus has capability to make the medium alkaline. Now, now since the food or the chyme is coming from the stomach which was highly acidic, so now if you have something which can make the medium alkaline that would be good. So mucus helps to make the medium alkaline so that means it is uh, advantageous and also there are another set of cells which are called brush border cells. Now these mucus also helps in lubricating food that is by default because mucus is a slimy substance. Now brush border cells what do they do? The name is quite different right brush border cells. Let us see what are they. Now cells lining the villi giving a brush border appearance are called brush border cells. Now what are villi? Villi are nothing but uh, finger like foldings of the mucosal epithelium. So here like this is how the inner layer of the epi mucosal epithelium is. This is how the inner layer is right. This layer is mucosal epithelium. Right? Now the inner layer has foldings of this pattern. Correct? So these are finger like projection. Now each of these projections are known as villi. So if you magnify this part it will look somewhat like this. So you see these are the finger like projections basically. So this is how the finger like projection looks like. See? Somewhat like this. So this is a magnified version of that. So now this villi are finger like structures but there are cells which line the villi. So on the outer edge of the villi you have some cells which are like very thin structures. They give the appearance of brush. So brush generally has uh, hair like structure like this. This is how a brush looks like. So this is how the boundary of the villi also looks like. So this lining of the villi consists of structures called microvilli which are even thinner and smaller than villi. So these microvilli form the brush, gives a brush border appearance and that is why these cells are called brush border cells. So here these are the brush border cells, the green colored cells which you see here that is the brush border cells. So these cells also secrete enzymes. So what kind of enzymes are you talking about? Now so these cells whether it is goblet cell or the brush border cell they are part of small intestine. So the enzymes which are secreted they all together form the intestinal juice like how stomach excretes gastric juice uh, liver secretes bile juice, uh, pancreas secretes pancreatic juice, similarly intestine secretes intestinal juice and in, in the intestine it is basically these cells which secrete this intestinal juice. Now if you talk about the intestinal juice what is it made up of? It has several enzymes. So enzymes like lipases, nucleosidases, it also has dipeptidases, and disaccharidases. So with the names now everything ends with A's which says that they are all enzymes, lipases which will digest lipids, nucleotidases which will digest nucleotides, dipeptidases which will further digest dipeptides and disaccharidases which will further digest disaccharides because the food is already partially digested. So now you do not have carbohydrates in the form of starch or polysaccharides. So now you have most of the carbohydrates in the form of disaccharides. Similarly now you do not have proteins in its most complex form. You have it in the form of dipeptides. Similarly for nucleotides and lipases. So the partially digested food needs to be fully digested now and for that this intestinal juice will also help. So let us see how. So now we will look at the exact process of digestion. So for that the first step is going to be mixing up. What happens in this step? 
the chyme, the bile juice, pancreatic juice, intestinal juice, everything needs to be mixed up properly. Now the chyme enters the small intestine through the pyloric sphincter from the stomach. Okay, the bile juice and the pancreatic juice, these two comes from the hepatopancreatic duct into the small intestine, into the duodenum to be more specific. And the intestinal juice, it is secreted by the cells of the intestine like the goblet cells and the uh, uh, brush border cells. So th these are something which gets secreted within the intestine. So now you have all these four things in the duodenum. So proper mixing up has to take place. Now who helps in the mixing up of all these things? Obviously the muscularis cells. So the cells which are present in the muscularis layer of the epithelium by their contractory movements, they help in the movement or they help in mixing up of all these four things. Chyme, bile, juice, pancreatic and intestinal juice. Now once everything gets mixed up properly, then the action of the enzyme starts. Now before the action of the enzyme starts, the enzymes need to be activated because many of the enzymes are were in inactive form. So for the enzymes to actually act on something, they should be in active form. So now let us look at the digestive enzymes which we are talking about. So we are talking about activation of which digestive enzymes. Now we saw that the enzymes are mostly, now to be clear, chyme is the food. So there is no enzymes there. Bile juice doesn't carry any enzymes with it. Pancreatic juice. Now this pancreatic juice has a lot of enzymes in it. So let us see what all enzymes are there. Trypsinogen. It also has chymotrypsinogen and these are all inactive enzymes. It also has procarboxypeptidase. It has amylases, lipases, nucleases. So it has a variety of enzymes actually and many of these enzymes are in inactive form. So if you see trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, procarboxypeptidase, they are all in their inactive form. So they need to be activated. So in the next step, once they are all mixed up well together, in that case, these enzymes need to be activated. Now who activates all these enzymes? Now, from the intestine also, a lot of things are secreted and one, one of them is an enzyme called enterokinase. So that is secreted from the intestinal mucosa. Mucosa is the innermost layer of the intestine. So from the innermost layer of the intestine, an enzyme called enterokinase is secreted. And this enterokinase actually activates this enzyme. So when it activates these enzymes, what happens? Trypsinogen gets converted to trypsin, which is an active enzyme. Chymotrypsinogen gets converted to chymotrypsin, which is again an active enzyme. Procarboxypeptidase gets converted into carboxypeptidase, which is again an active enzyme. And all these enzymes like amylase, lipase, nucleases, all needs to be activated at this step. Now, for activation of lipase, bile juice also plays a role. Bile juice also helps to activate the enzyme lipase. So, by next step, by this second step, all the enzymes are active now. Now, once the enzymes are active, what will happen? Now these enzymes will actually help in the real digestion process. So I'm sorry I've written it above this. So in anyways it is all the same which is written here also. Enterokinase will uh, activate all these enzymes. So I hope this is better and clear. Okay, so now we will see the third step which is the most important step where I will show you the chemical reactions which take place where the food particles or the complex substances are actually broken down into the simplest form. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.